Good Wednesday morning. This is the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for this Wednesday, August 8th. A look at precipitation and lightning the past 24 hours, bone dry in terms of both precipitation, no significant lightning in the area. We're still dealing, however, with holdovers from recent lightning over the weekend with our current hot and dry conditions. Initial uh, attack with new fire starts in the red circles, uh, recent existing fires in the yellow, the open circles, uh, various colors yellow to purple indicate ongoing large incidents. Precipitation, you can see how dry on the left-hand side we've been across northwest Nevada, all of Idaho pretty much. Uh, even this first shade of blue is only a couple hundredths of an inch, so not much going on there. Look at this donut hole down here in southeast Utah. And even if you look on the right-hand side for the past 14 days, very dry in those same areas. And even here in southeast Utah, outside these little green pockets, these uh, first and second shades of blue only indicate a couple of hundredths of an inch over a two-week period. Uh, that's minimal, and that explains why we've gotten so dry even down in our southeastern areas of Utah, uh, where ERCs are in the 80th to approaching the 90th percentile. Uh, you can see that dryness gets even worse as we head into the northern portion of Utah, the northern tier of Nevada. These purple ERCs, 97th percentile or above, which means they're near record levels. We see similar critically dry conditions over just about all of Idaho. And even western Wyoming now starting to get into it. Some ERCs approaching the 90th percentile in a few stations, more moist as you head further to the east. A look at some uh, specific PSAs up here in our uh, mountains up by McCall and Payette. Our ERCs are at record levels. You see the record levels in the red. The normal is in the gray uh, shade. Uh, and this indicates we're at record levels there. We've also dried out quite a bit across northwestern Nevada. Uh, predictive service here, 14 also at record levels. And even down here in south central Utah, uh, looking down here, um, we're at record levels. Now, admittedly, they're not uh, records for all time. They're below the 97th percentile. But if you draw a straight line from that spot to where it intersects our normal summer maximum ERC, we're actually above the mid, the early summer normals which usually occur at the end of June, early July. So we've really critically dried out there, a, a wide area of very dry conditions. Uh, nothing much in the satellite imagery except for the lack of monsoon, which has been pushed down. Even most of Arizona is mostly dry. It's down into towards the Mexico border is where the deeper monsoonal moisture is and where it will stay for the next few days under this high-pressure ridge, which will build in with near record heat over the next few days. And the critical aspect will be when will this upper ridge break down? The breakdown of the upper ridge is a critical fire weather pattern. This trough flow pressure will cause it. When that happens, you usually either get wind or lightning or sometimes a little bit of both. Before today, we are going to see heat. We have high pressure over us. The tannish colors indicate very dry atmospheric conditions while the moisture again pushed down south into Mexico. And we do have high risk for a combination of uh, near record heat and also dry, unstable air aloft, which could act on existing fires, create plume dominated conditions with, with the Haynes Index. And we can see here on the right hand side the Haynes Index a 6 here in this uh, reddish shade, a 5 in the orange shade. So all through Nevada, Utah, and pockets of uh, Idaho. The Haynes Index is quite high today. Winds overall fairly light, some gusts coming off the southern Sierra, maybe some moderate gusts along and east of the Wasatch uh, at about maybe 12 to 18 miles per hour, maybe some gusts near 20 um, through here. And this could affect the hilltop fire a little bit. I have to keep an eye on that. Otherwise, winds fairly light. High pressure builds even stronger on Thursday. You can see that closed up high. This is as good as it gets for midsummer heat, keeping that monsoonal moisture to the south. Very dry, unstable air across the northern two-thirds of our area and also extends up into uh, the northern Rockies, into parts of northern Idaho and Montana. And we can see that that Haynes Index expand uh, broadly across all of Utah, all of Nevada, more so into Idaho now, bigger area of sixes and fives. So existing fires could see plume-dominated growth, even though winds here indicated to be fairly light, less than five miles per hour in that purple shade. And then on Friday, high pressure ridge still strong, but starts to shift further to the east, starting to break down in response to this low pressure trough approaching the Pacific Northwest. Moisture for now uh, kept at bay. We continue with the hot and dry shifting a bit further to the east. 
And again, look at that Haynes Index, a 6 across a good portion of central and eastern Nevada, uh, most of Utah, almost all of Idaho. So this will be the, the day that our Idaho fires uh, really have the best chance of getting big and getting plume dominated. Um, also on the left-hand side, notice the winds coming in off uh, the Cascades or the northern Sierra into northwestern um, Nevada and also into parts of Oregon and knocking on the doorstep in Idaho. That's the wind ahead of that next trough of low pressure following the breakdown of the upper high. I'll have to watch this as we go into the weekend. Three-day precipitation. Uh, there could be on late Friday some thunderstorms that may sneak into the Vegas area, into southern Utah. Uh, still a big question mark. Otherwise, most areas stay dry. Now on Saturday, notice no more high pressure. Notice the tight height lines through here packed in there. That's indicative of strong upper level winds, 50 knot winds here in the upper levels with this trough of low pressure. So it knocks the high pressure out. We will see cooling, but we also see significant winds after significant drying through these areas. We may have to consider high risk for Saturday. Uh, we'll have to watch another model run to see exactly how this behaves or whether it could produce thunderstorms, which could be a big threat as well. Uh, also, isolated storms pushing into southern Utah, south central Nevada. So these also have to be watched for some maybe a mix of dry and wet lightning. Dry here in Nevada, a little bit wetter here in southern Utah. On Sunday, notice this moisture expands through here. We'll see a more widespread day of showers and thunderstorms uh, drier on the northern fringes here across central Nevada. A good portion of the mountain chain of Utah getting into parts of western Wyoming. Um, we do have some computer glitches. We don't have the seven day for Monday and Tuesday, but we do notice here on the left hand side, uh, this green area indicates a thunderstorm and moisture chances. And given that this is kind of stationary, this could start getting a little wetter uh, through here, but maybe some still some dry lightning on the northern periphery and uh, that moisture and thunderstorm activity and showers starts exiting to the east on Tuesday. Seven-day precipitation totals, most of this will be in the latter portion of the period. We could see some wetting rains of a quarter inch or so, maybe locally heavier pockets in the mountains of south-central Utah down to the Arizona Strip and the Mount Charleston area. Otherwise, most other areas, only light amounts of rain also mixed in with the lightning. The 8 to 14-day outlook shows above normal temperatures for the most part. Uh, moisture and precipitation a bit above normal as the monsoon returns to our southern areas. This concludes our briefing. Have a great day.